we'll move on to the other reviews we got this week. So first off, we'll start with White Man, White Men Can't Jump, a remake of the Woody Harrelson, Wesley Snipes movie of the 90s, I believe. And uh, now yeah. we're, we're back with it. Cal Maddock directing, uh, Jack Harlow starring. And uh, yeah, I think a lot of people are looking forward to this just simply because of the Jack Harlow effect. Can't say it was that great, though, uh, at least for me. I'm going to cater to George first because he was higher on it than me. So, George, what were your thoughts on White Man Can't Jump? Yeah, it's it's funny because, like, White Man Can't Jump getting a two and a half for me, like, that's a good two and a half. But, like, I don't know, something like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood getting a two and a half, that's a bad two and a half. So, like, I gave it two and a half, but, like, I'm not going to sit here and shit on this movie. Like, and I think going into it, I was expecting it to be, like, a 0.5 out of five. So, I just came out way more pleased than I expected. And I don't even like Jack Harlow, so I wasn't even, like, rushing to see this movie. I just happened to come home uh, from work early on Friday, and I saw it had been released. I was like, all right, let's just tune this on. This movie genuinely had me laughing. Like, there were moments where I was, like, genuinely laughing. There was one Bonnie Vare comment that had me rolling, bro. It was so funny. Um, But this movie is exactly what you would expect. It lacks, like, the heart that the original lacks it lacks kind of like the chemistry between all our characters that the original like succeeded in like crazy um jack harlow is a terrible dramatic actor but i guess he balances it out because i thought his comedic timing was super on point um like genuinely i thought he was funny um but no th- this this movie didn't do anything for me it was an entertaining hour and 45 minutes um and and i i, I went in expecting this to be my lowest rated movie of the year and it's not. It's a two and a half. I, 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 I had a decent time with it, I'll say. Like, I had fun with it. I definitely enjoyed it. I definitely laughed. But, you know, at the end of the day, this movie just did nothing for me. Yeah, not to make a basketball pun, but this movie just felt like it had, like, no bounce to me. It had no life. Like, it was just very much a, a movie that was written as a reboot, and they just kind of copy and paste. Like, they just kind of went through the motions on set and didn't – didn't really look like like Jack Harlow like was fine in this. It didn't really look like anyone was having fun though. Like it didn't really look like anyone was like really happy to be there making this yeah. movie. They just like I, I genuinely laughed out loud, not for the right reasons. When uh, I can't, I don't know the name of the other guy in the cast. Let me get this quick. So when Cinqua Walls, when he wins like in the basketball game at the end, and like the game's over, and he like walks right up to his wife. He's like, "My dad's dead, isn't he?" <laughs> it's like, or like he's gone, isn't he? It's like it's something about like how like how unemotional like. and undramatic he was in saying that. Just like quickly wins the basketball game. He's like, "My dad's dead, isn't he?" I was just like, I just laughed. Like that was such a so yeah. just weird and out of place. The, the, the dramatic moments of this movie are what hold it back yeah. for me. Like I wish they just embraced like this reboot as just like a full blown comedy because I do I I laughed a chunk. But like there were just some moments, like even when um, like Jack Harlow is fighting with his uh, with his girlfriend at one point, I was like, "There's just like their acting is so bad; it just removed me from this entire scene, which should be like an emotional scene, not emotional, but it should have been a heavier scene because they were talking about some like heavy stuff." But it was just I don't know, not yeah. it. George, whenever whenever one of us get around to proposing, we got to take a book out of Jack Harlow and let's just pretend we tore our ACL and fall. Yeah. Over. And pretend you tear your ACL and fall to your knee and then do the proposal. I was like, God damn, this is just, that was so funny. Yeah, so so corny, but like I enjoyed Jack Harlow's like goofy character of just being like a kombucha loving, sandal wearing yeah. hippie. Uh, just he's just a funny guy, but uh, I can't really say I enjoyed much of this movie. It was just kind of just like a very. I don't know. It's just like you turn it on and I got exactly what I was expecting from it. Yeah. It's like I, I saw um, Chris's review actually made me laugh. He was like, no, it wasn't a good movie, but I turned it on and started doing my laundry and forgot it was playing in the background. So I had a good time with it. <laughs> right. And that's what it's kind of, I mean, it's a, it's a Hulu original streaming movie. It's kind of like, that's what I feel like it's meant for. Like if you're going to watch it, don't give it your full attention. Like it's not really worth that. But if you can, if you, if you want to just have something on the background, not the worst thing in the world. There's kind of good vibes in the movie, I guess. Yeah. But uh, there are worse movies out there. For definitely. Sure. Uh, anything else you want to add on White Men Can't Jump? Not really. Just yeah. highlighting that Bonnie Bear comment. I literally had to rewind that because I was dying so badly. <laughs> that shit was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, and then I, I love how the like, he like ended up in like the. He actually ended up playing for like the Lakers G League. Yeah, like, like a ten day. It's like that's such a. 
it's such a trope in like basketball, like street basketball movies where it's like, oh, I'm going to make it to the league. But I feel like no one ever ends up actually like yeah. making it that far. It's about like the experience and what you learn along the way that matters. But in this movie, it's like, no, it literally just goes from the streets to like, oh, now I'm on the Lakers. Sweet. It's also We're funny because like the, all of these like invitationals or basketball tournaments they played in, like they, they not one time mentioned like any scouts, any right. NBA players being there watching. Like in my mind, these are just like, you know, small California or Florida, wherever they were tournaments that they're just playing in. Like, and then like they win a tournament in which none of them like excelled. Like none of them showed any prowess that would get them to the league on a 10 day right. contract. And I was like, okay, I man made it. And now Jack Harlow is also a, I guess, guru. Yeah. It, it that, yeah, there's nothing more I need to add on that one. It was a very fine bad yeah. movie like it's it's not like i don't like rate it 1.5 in any disdain or dis, or not trying to spite it it just there just wasn't much there exactly uh, what you would expect yeah exactly um like, and then nothing I'm, gonna, more. I'm gonna do like a quick one sentence review of all these other new releases i saw so we're gonna rapidly rapid fire go through them because i did have a quad feature on friday of new releases because i like with travel last week and with family in town like i hadn't gone i hadn't seen these new releases so i had to check off a lot so i'll just go in order of what i watched for my quad feature <laughs> started off with master gardener latest movie from paul schrader um felt a lot like the card counter if you guys saw that paul schrader movie from five years ago or whatever but oh the this, one with oscar isaac i haven't seen that yeah I seen oscar movie. isaac have you seen yeah. Yet? i have not so Please i need to get it. around to that I didn't love Master Gardener. It's uh, like I know like Doug really enjoyed it, and it's like it's a movie that's getting mixed reviews, but Paul Schrader cultists are really really liking it. So I think I might like it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think I didn't realize Paul Schrader is such a cult following. Where like literally like every review on Letterbox is the same exact thing. Like oh, Paul's so silly for this. Is like the parasocial glazing going on is is wild for Paul Schrader. Uh, he's I don't know. It's a weird movie. I didn't love it. I didn't connect with the main story. Like I, I could say what is more what it's about, but that would kind of spoil the wild premise that this movie is. So just go for what you saw in the trailer. It's just a, you know, a gardener, and uh, some things aren't as as it seems. And once you find out what the things are that aren't as it seems, it gets. It's a very interesting premise. It's very interesting to say the least. I gave it a two out of five star. Um, so I didn't hate it. I just didn't really love it. Um, then I moved from that into Fool's Gold. Which I did hate. That's my lowest movie of the year. Charlie Day. I don't know, man. Oh, like, I, I really like you, Charlie Day. It's it's bold. He made it basically a Charlie Chaplin style comedy because he has zero lines in the movie. He never says a single word. Everyone else in the movie is talking, but he doesn't say a single word. Which, for someone who I think is just genuinely as funny as Charlie Day, that's just a bold move for a comedy to just completely kind of remove you from it. Ken Jong gets a lot of the dialogue in this, and this is like the least funny Ken Jong's ever been, which is saying something because i genuinely think he's usually very funny is that hangover yep that's yeah, the hangover yeah. guy um, also Fool, fool's paradise oh sorry i, I say yeah, you, um, you you said the matthew mcconaughey fool's gold oh, oh fool's yeah movie. very different movies <laughs> fool's paradise yeah fool's paradise was ass it's the worst year of the movie for me i didn't laugh once and chuckle once didn't even have like a heavy breath once like it just wasn't funny uh, i kind of just hated every second of it from there i went into hypnotic wasn't as bad, but that's just a bad movie, man. They, it's like they literally just yep. tried to combine Inception, Interstellar, Memento, and it felt like a soap opera on top of that. Ben Affleck just didn't look like he wanted to be there. I feel like he just purely made that movie just to make some make some paychecks just so he could pay for the air budget. But, yeah, it was just not, not a good movie. Hypnotic, 1.5 star. Don't waste your time with it. And then finally, capped off the quad feature with BlackBerry. That is very much worth it. I think that's a must-see for everyone, whether it's in the theaters or when it gets out on streaming. But I gave that a four star. It's like right on the border of being a 4.5 star because I gave it an 8.4. Genuinely super funny. Glenn Howerton, I think, will be or could be an Oscar nominated for his acting performance. He did incredible. I roasted his bald cap in my letterbox review because that's the worst bald cap I've ever seen. Turns out, not a bald cap. He just actually shaved his head. So something's just very uncanny about the way he looks in this movie. Um, it's like he has a lot of makeup on it. Just, it's just odd. Like he's not old enough to play like a character with that kind of hair. I don't know. It's weird. But the movie itself very funny, and then it gets very dark and it's it's very good. Blackberry highly recommend. And then quickly finish the rap fire. Still a Michael Fo- Michael J. Fox movie. The documentary first six minutes of that like hooked What's me more than any documentary ever has. It's on Apple TV Plus. I re- okay. everyone should watch that. It's like. Even if you're not like a huge Michael J. Fox fan of his movies, which I don't know how you couldn't be, like the Back to the Future movies are incredible, or um, at least the first couple. 
uh, yeah, it's, it's such a good documentary. I think everyone should see it. It's only 90 minutes, and it's genuinely so good. Like, not just, like, the subject matter, but, like, the way they tell the story is super great. Um, book Club, the next chapter. got I got into the Book Club lore this weekend. I watched the first one and then watched the sequel. It's, like, fine. It's, like, a three-star, which is better than I expected Oh, really? It to be. Yeah, it's, like, a 5.5 out of 10, so the very bottom rung of three-star, but... It was like a very fine, okay movie. Like I had more fun with that than I did 80 for Brady. And then lastly, Carmen. No one's talking about this movie, but it's starring Paul Mescal and Melissa Barrera. And Ow. yeah, and like limited theaters. I saw it. I had to go to like my niche theater to see it, but it's a musical. They dance a lot in it. Paul Mescal, you hear him play the acoustic guitar and sing. You also see Paul Mescal bare knuckle box. You see Melissa Barrera dance a ton. I feel like there's a movie that like, Film Twitter would love just because it's like two up and coming stars that do stuff that like everyone would love to see them do like play music and be shirtless. <laughs> um, but yeah, so trying to see Paul Mescal bare knuckle box. Yeah, dude, like it's, it. it's he basically plays like a border patrol agent and Melissa Barrera is playing someone crossing the border and they their paths cross and this all happens in like the first like two minutes. That's kind of what like the story is, <laughs> and then from there they go together and uh, run away together. And this is kind of the story of that. And Carmen is Melissa Barrera. And that's the whole premise of the movie. Um, but yeah, it, it was fine. It was like 5.7 out of 10. It's super unique and artistic. But Paul Messiah and Melissa Barrera are awesome. So it was cool seeing them. And that's the rundown of all the new releases I've seen. So I'm going to kick it over to the new release that Seth has seen. Which finally... Eh, not really finally. It's it's not the farthest A24 release the, no. the UK has had. It's probably only been like three weeks or a month or something since it came yeah. out here. But yeah, I was like afraid... I was like, yeah, bro. I, felt like, I still haven't seen that, to be fair. Really? Yeah, I've, I've, I missed out on cinema, so I'm definitely waiting, waiting until it comes out on streaming nice. here. Yeah. Yeah. Seth is now officially a boner. Let's hear it. Bo is afraid. Uh, what? What's the review? The boners, uh, the boner champs. It's um, really weird. Uh, I really liked the first half, the first kind of hour and a half of it, mainly because... I related and empathized with Bo. You know, he's afraid of the outside world, his anxiousness, his feelings towards family, towards people, towards isolation. I found it really interesting and also quite scary as well, in a way. And I think that Ariast has a way of shooting which just makes me incredibly uncomfortable. And I, I found it to be really, in a positive way, well, in one of the first hour and a half. But then when, it, and the play scene as well. I think I'm frozen. Am I frozen? You were for a second, yeah. but you're back now. Yeah, right, first of me. Uh, yeah, the, the play scene I really liked. I don't know about you guys. I, I kind of like felt like I was tripping out for most of the play scene. It was really fucking weird. Uh, but I really liked yeah. that bit. Um, Joaquin Phoenix was great. Uh, what was the... What's his mom called? Um, uh, Patty LePone? Le Patty LePone? Like yeah, it's, it's I think she was fantastic. I really, really liked her. But the, the kind of final hour just lost me in a way and i think it's hard with a film like this because this is a very much a self-involved film from ariasta where you're going to either connect with it depending on your experiences and your your emotions and, and and how you relate to certain things and i think it's very much hard to it's very self-indulgent isn't it it's 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 on ariasta and there's no game past that and it was a shame because i when i watched the first an hour and a half i was like i'm going to give this like a, a 4.5 the way this is going i'm loving this and even though it lost me in the second half there was no point where i was bored or i felt like it was tedious which is surprising for a three-hour film especially given the fact that i gave it a three star which isn't crazy high i don't tyler did you give it a three star yeah it might be three 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 star. i okay. gave it a three too okay so yeah um, I it was what, honestly but yeah i liked it yeah so it was one of them where it kind of it didn't get tedious but i i think the social commentary in the final hour and a half was very much in your face like with the penis monster it's like i get it I know what you're trying to say, but it's so obvious what you're trying to say that it's like, what's the point? It found, it found it very much to be the last hour and a half very shallow um, and surface level in a way, whereas I think the first hour and a half was very much more well done. However, that might just be based on my experiences and my um, empathy with Bo. I thought Wacky Phoenix was fantastic, as he always is. I think he was really, really good. And I think on a technical level, it was a it was a fantastic film. But I will, I will watch again because I think it will be a film of benefits from an, or warrants another rewatch because there's so much to it. Um, but yeah, really, really good first half. Feeling didn't really last in the second half. Um, three three star. Um, I did enjoy it, but it's a shame because it did very much fall off for me after the first kind of hour and a half, I would say. 
Yeah, I, I tweeted the other day. I said, like, for some reason I want to rewatch Bo is Afraid. And I just feel that way with a lot of Ari Aster films, which is, like, weird because I've only seen them all once. But, like, Hereditary, obviously, like, wild movie, scary movie. But, like, something about it I want to rewatch. Midsummer, super disturbing. Like, a movie you wouldn't think you'd really want to watch again. But, like, for some reason I'm drawn to, like, wanting to rewatch. Yeah, so I need to about, watch Midsummer again. Something about yeah. Ari Aster is, like, addicted to me. Like, I kind of want to re, re-get into that world again. So, Bo is Afraid, I, I think I will rewatch, like, immediately when it comes out of streaming because I've been kind of itching to. I've watched Hereditary, like I'm sure George has as well, like probably four or five couple, times, maybe. A couple of times, yeah, yeah. A couple of times. But Midsummer, I've probably only seen. I think I've only seen it once. And I think that'll deserve a rewatch because I've only seen it twice. Quiet. Yeah, I'm weirdly yeah. like not compelled to like rewatch Midsummer well, the way I like Hereditary. So I felt like at the time I may have been missing something because I didn't love it, but I did like it, and I feel like there's a lot there that maybe I I, I didn't take in at the time. I think Arias is very, very. He's a very weird but interesting filmmaker. He, he, speak, he makes movies for himself. He doesn't care. No, this is the thing. Anyone is, is going to think yeah, about which is why I, I admire about him because his films are so self-involved. Yeah. Where if you're loving a film that is so self-involved, like he doesn't give a fuck. He's just making movies for himself, like you yeah. said. So it's quite an accomplishment that people love him as a filmmaker. Yeah. Um. Also, just to put in my note, now I have seen uh, my. Uh, now I have seen Bo's Afraid. You know the argument of Peel Eggers Aster. You know what was going on on Twitter because like yeah. A lot of Million percent, I'm sticking with what I said before. Eggers one, peel two, ask the three for me, anyway. Okay. That's my that's my three. I'm assuming, go. George, I'm assuming you'd be peel Eggers Aster, another way around, peel Aster Eggers. Really, yeah, that's disgusting. Think I'm peel you're, a horror, you're a horror guy, man. Peel Aster Eggers as well for me. I, 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 I rate uh, I rate Hereditary, um, and Midsummer higher than. The Northman and the Witch, but uh, I, yeah, I, 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 I think the Lighthouse is better than Midsummer. Oh, he's the last one. And like right the, there, uh, right there with Hereditary. Midsummer, like a three point five. Bell is afraid of like a three, and Hereditary is obviously really high. Yeah, Get Out really make it's close between Aster and Peel for me. Yeah, Get, Get Out, out holds, really like yeah puts Peel in a place another because I just fucking love that film. 